After many weeks of threatening, it's finally time for the day that I thought would never come. Reassembly of the Carby. Luckily I planned ahead during disassembly and labelled everything appropriately. I definitely didn't miss anything during that process. And it seems like it's going to be one of those mornings. But we'll get there. Uh. Hey Mickey, keep one rolled for later, yeah? Eyes low, blazing OG, you know me, the young trend set a force with me like Kenobi. Knowledge in abundance that can alter your mind. They say I speak to the youth for All right, I told a half truth. The carby is ready for reassembly, but I'd like to clean those last little bits in the bins before I do that. These are some of the containers that I designed in one of my previous videos for the workbench that I'm using here. If you haven't watched that one yet, here's a link. All right, let's get started. I'll get back to the specs on these parts later, but for now, let's just get them clean. I'm still using my 50-50-ish solution of water and vinegar for cleaning in the ultrasonic. And while it does seem to do a decent job with general grime, it doesn't seem to do quite enough for carbon buildup. I've got a couple more solutions to try, but for now I'll just use these, get them cleaned up as best I can, try not to break any more glass containers, and then tidy up the rest with some carby cleaner from the can. I am a little bit risk averse and I don't want to leave the aluminium in with the vinegar for too long so it is possible that with a little more time they come out a little bit cleaner but I don't think the risk to reward ratio is there for me. But you can see after a little love they're looking better than ever and ready to go back together. Okay now the carby is ready for reassembly but there is one last missing piece for the intake assembly and you might have noticed a gap in the layout before. And for that one we're going to have to have a look in one of my definitely not scrap metal boxes. What I need here is a perch or mount for the spring return on the accelerator linkage. You can see this lovely setup that was previously on the car, but I think we can do a little better. I've left a provision on the 3D print for the mount to attach, but that's as far as I got. I deliberately didn't want to overthink it, so I haven't prepared any design or shape for this. I'm just going to completely wing it. And that's basically my life in a nutshell. Either completely overthought or zero consideration at all. So yeah, we're really living on the edge here. Let's try not to get too crazy. I'm still so happy with this quick change tool post. So we'll get the piece in the lathe, we'll face the end, and all right, I'll just get a little bit of a quick sketch together. Basically, the only requirements are somewhere for the spring to locate, and they need to be an appropriate distance out from the mounting holes. All right, that's it. The rest of it, we are gonna wing it. A Little bit of a chamfer on the end here, and I'm not ready to give up on the rye chem just yet, so let's give it another go. Yeah, all right, it needs some tweaking. It doesn't look great. But it did enough to get the marks on there, that's all I really need. So I'm just going to have a play around now and see if I can get something that looks kind of okay. And let's add a groove for the spring to attach to. Not too bad, but I shouldn't be lazy. Let's check it on the actual adapter plate. Not bad, but I need a little bit more depth for those springs. And in the spirit of being even less lazy, let's check it on the actual car. And that's looking pretty good. You can see what I mean about not wanting it too far in or out. And as I expected, I'm going to have to shorten the length of the springs, but I've already planned for that. Back to the lathe, and I'll concede and use a sharpie for the rest of the marking out. One final check to make sure the length is going to be correct. And this is my next roadblock. I'd really hoped to have my mill set up in time for this project, but it wasn't to be. So seeing as we're winging it, and the lathe is really just a horizontal mill, and I happen to have this rather large collection of tooling that I'll talk about in a future video, this might be the perfect project to test some of it out. Oh, look what was laying right on top here. How convenient. I've got this boring bar holder which is the perfect size for what I need. However, I'd like to avoid marking the surface of the part if possible. So, back to the box. For whatever reason, the stars have aligned and there should be just enough space to use this can as a shim in the tool holder and hopefully it will protect the surface of the part from marking. And how about that? Studies say 60% of the time it works every time. Now let's go cut this extra length off. If you haven't watched my previous videos, I'm not super keen to part things off in this lathe. Being that it's so small, it's quite prone to flexing, and seeing as the part's already out, it's much easier to just cut it on the bandsaw and then face it once back in the lathe. So let's do that. Now that I've got the depth set, it's time for the moment of truth. I'm going to start with some very light cuts. I 
I'm shooting for 9mm here, so let's see how we go. Perfect. Now I've got this face square to the lathe, I can use a cross slide and a set square to rotate the piece 90 degrees as best I can and machine the back face parallel to the first. But before I do that, I'm going to try and get the piece on centre as best I can and then drill the two mounting holes. Last attempt with the Rycam and yeah, alright, it needs some tweaking. I know I'm playing with danger here using the centre drill to score the face, but this end is already damaged. It also makes for some nice foreshadowing. You can see I was a little off there with my center, so I'll make a couple of adjustments to the tool holder and then we're good to go. Now I'm going to take this very easy as this isn't the best tool for the job and I really don't want a piece of hardened tool steel broken in my part. So naturally, when I was just about happy, I decided to do one last little dip and of course. It had already been a very long day at this point, so I decided to wait to address that. I put in a new center drill, checked it was on center with the first hole and then moved it across to pre-drill the second. And this time I wasn't taking any chances. Happy with that, I piloted the same hole and definitely didn't have an off-camera attempt at doing something I knew wouldn't work and making a mess of the first centre hole. I decided my only option was to try and push it out through the back side, so I pressed on with setting up the part for machining the back face. Let's see how good I am at working off the dials. Alright. Moment of truth, got it. Hard to tell from the camera angle, but that is actually basically dead on. You can see where I mutilated the hole before, but as I'd planned and kinda hoped, it will be removed once I enlarge the hole. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Everything worked out more or less just how I planned it. There is a slight mark you can see where the tool holder ate through the shim, but I've got a feeling it actually may not have been aligned properly, so probably my fault. Anyway, let's clean this up a bit. That's actually starting to look like a part, but it needs some chamfers. I often talk on the phone while working, and it's ruined my ASMR here, so you can listen to that instead. Oh, that and we are done. This is just how I imagined it. I left a radius to match the washer and nut on the bottom and squared off the edge on the other side to meet the bottom of the 3D print. I could have filed the surface to be more smooth, but I actually don't mind the machining marks in the end and I decided to leave a hint of them. I think it contrasts well with the smooth surfaces. I feel justified in keeping an ungodly amount of scrap around the shop now that I've made this little 100 gram part, so you should feel justified in doing the same. The next thing on the list is this gasket for the air filter. Being that it's an aftermarket k and filter, and that I don't think they even sell this one anymore, I thought it'd be easy enough to just make my own. I probably could have reused this one, but look how ugly it is. We can't have that. So here we go again, another 3D printed car part that the internet can comment on and tell me how it's not going to work. I guess we'll just have to find out together. Oh no, look at this plastic part that I've printed. There's only one type of material you can 3D print with, and unfortunately it will just never work in an engine bay. All right, I'm done. I was gonna replace this filter, but then I remembered that I'd bought a K&N service kit on sale about four years ago, so I thought I might as well use it. Look at me go. I could go on a rant about the oil in these filters and why I don't use them on my EFI cars, but we'll save that for another day. This is a degreaser that I sprayed on and let it soak in for about 15 minutes. Then I washed it out and repeated the process again. While that was drying, I had a better read of the label on the oil aerosol, and being that I'm old now and I've hardly seen so many warnings on a label before, I decided it was time for some PPE. The directions say apply a light coat and let it soak in for about 30 minutes, then repeat if needed. And that's what I did. By this point I was beginning to have had enough for the day, but there was no point cutting any corners now. Trying to clean the manifold surface was a pain with these bolts in the way, and they could probably do with a tidy up themselves, so I had to pull them out. You know what time it is. Same deal as before, it worked pretty well, but needed a touch of carby cleaner. Hey. 
Okay, now I promise it's Carby assembly time. But has anyone seen the last episode of The Sopranos? You know where they just... <laughs> ah, I'm just kidding. But that actually is it for this installment. Assembly of the Carby's oh. next, and I might even get the car started. Thanks for watching. Let yeah, me know what you think in the comments below. Lady, yeah?